Hello, thank you so much for joining me tonight. My name is Sharon Rogers and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Wells, Maine in the United States. And tonight we conclude my three-part series featuring the Zoo Crew Suite. So we'll do some stamping with the Zany Zoo stamps. We'll use the dies a little bit, but we really are focusing on the Zoo Crew Designer Series paper because it is just so great, has so many great little characters. Let's see what we can make tonight. I received a card very similar to this one. Uh, way back when the annual catalog first came out, a bunch of demonstrators across the country participated in the swap and I just loved this one when I got it. So I wanted to recreate it and I wanted to share it with you. So the first thing we're gonna do is take some of our Zoo Crew paper. And I've been using this for the last couple weeks. So I'm just gonna take my little koala bear here and I'm gonna fussy cut him. Now, you can see that I've done a little bit of a rough cut. I haven't cut out all the white spaces, and that's because, and I haven't worried too much about this little piece, although honestly, it's bothering me just to look at it right here. So I'm gonna trim that. It doesn't have to be the best of cuts because we're going to be mounting it on a basic white circle. So now we're gonna get out our two and three eighths inch circle punch and a scrap of basic white. And the circle will already be punched for you in the class kit, if you get the class kit. How do you get the class kit? By placing an order of $35 or more in my online store. So we're gonna just take this guy now and we're gonna put him up on the dimensionals. And I've got this last little piece right here that I'm going to use up so I can discard this sheet finally. It doesn't have much left on it. And I'll pull in another one. So when I'm doing my classes, we use generally fresh sheets so I make sure I have enough on hand and I use up the remainders for my videos. Well, and anything else I do. So let's see, that looks pretty good right there, I think. So I put them him up on dimensionals. Now, this one is a pool party card base with a pool party embossed layer on top. And we chose pool party because that's what color our koala is. I'm gonna Go ahead and this is a hot dog fold so it is four and a quarter by 11 scored in half at five and a half inches and we'll just give that a nice little burnish and i want to bring in an embossing folder here and i just love the folder that we used last week which is the crosshatch one from the basics 3d embossing folder set and there are three folders in that set and I just love this crosshatch one. The other one is bubbles, and then there's one that can either be thought of as starfish or flowers. It really does double for both. I'm gonna just emboss this. Let's bring in our embossing machine. And we need plate number one. We need our embossing folder with our folded edge going through first. And then we need plate number four. We'll just crank that through there. Right. 
I'm going to explain to you in just a second why I chose a hot dog fold for this card and why I think I'm genius for doing so. Um, honestly, I can't remember if the one I received was or was not. Um, but here's why. See this black and white gingham or checked re uh, ribbon that's running through it? Um, it's called the black and white uh, gingham ribbon. If you forget to put that around this layer and you attach this layer here first, you still have a chance to wrap it around the whole card if it's the hot dog fold. So that's why I think it's smart to do this, this fold with this card. I'm just gonna wrap this piece around. And I don't usually tie bows, but I do think it looks better with a bow on this one. So we're just gonna come off to the side here and tie a little, I think I'm gonna have to redo this. Yeah, because my ends, one end is too long and one end is too short. And I think I just pulled on the wrong end. I don't know. Let's see, let's do this again. All right, so Straighten my ends out a little bit. That's pretty good. Just keep fiddling until I get it the way I want it. I do have this little twist in here, but I, that's okay. I'm going to hold that down with something else. And we'll just go ahead and adhere this onto my card base. Here we go. And straighten this there. That looks pretty good. Hold that down. We can go ahead and put our koala bear on there. And if you want your ribbon a little higher, a little lower, you can still play with it while it's wet. I'm gonna go ahead and put my koala bear up on dimensionals. And there we go. Now let's just go ahead and trim these ends now that I have them the way I want it. So there we go. There's our little koala bear. And there we go. Now I need to put in these this little saying here. Now if you look in the Zany Zoo stamp set, that is one stamp, something great to celebrate you. And it looks right here as though there's a lot of space between the lines because I'm cutting them apart. But if you look closely, I think you can see that there's just a little sliver of black piece on a, on a larger black piece. So that's how we're going to do that magic. And when I'm doing something like cutting these two um, lines apart, I will stamp them twice so that I can get a good cut on one line at a time without worrying about ruining the second line. So we're just going to mount this here. And you know how I love white embossing on black cardstock. It's one of my favorites. It just looks so sharp I think All right. now I've been handling and it's very humid out here I've been handling my cardstock so I'm gonna use, open my embossing buddy and I give that a good rub over there that will take some of the moisture out of the card and some of the static I'm gonna take my Versamark And we will stamp this. I'm going to stamp it a little bit towards uh, one of the ends so that I don't have as far to cut. And I don't have to worry about stamping it straight because I really am cutting it um, 
cutting it out. Let's go ahead and take our white embossing powder. All right, let's check for some strays. Just a stray right there. Maybe a little bit of a stray right here. All right, that's good. Now we can emboss this. All right, I've been complaining about this for weeks. I'm gonna take this cover off and I'm not gonna put it back on. I don't really need the cover. Yes, it holds it in there, but the tray itself holds it in there. And if I'm gonna dump it, it's probably not gonna be dumped through here. All right, let's bring in our heat tool. I have my heat tool. I'm going to let it warm up for just a second. This piece is large enough so I don't need to hold it with the tweezers. Remember when you see it get all bright and shiny? Then you can move on to the next section. And it is good to inspect to make sure that you got it all heated because if you didn't, it's gonna rub off and then not look so great. I'm gonna go ahead and very carefully cut between these two guys. All right, I might even be able to just use one of these. I'm just cutting pretty closely. And I'm trying to be neat, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Because again, I'm putting this on another black layer. And all right, I have to cut from this side so that I can see. I can't see when it's to the right of my scissors. I think I can get this done in just one. Cut this excess off. That's good. Use this one for another time. And now I want to mount these on a piece that's slightly larger. I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer and I will have um, these trimmed and uh, done for you. I won't have the um, saying embossed, but I'm going to include um, just a scrap piece of basic black. I, I won't have it trimmed exactly to size. Um, I'll just have some small pieces for you. And that's because if you want to use a different sentiment, then um, I want you to be able to do that without having you know, to, to reuse the black. And I don't want the ones that I send to be wasted. So it looks like this piece is two by and it looks like three eighths of an inch wide. And this one up here is three eighths of an inch wide by um, not quite two, so one and seven eighths. So I know I want three eighths of an inch wide. So what I'm gonna do is just do three eighths of an inch wide. And I will worry about the length after I'm done. I'm going to take my precision tip. Now, this is not something that Stampin' Up! makes. This glue that's inside is the green glue. I've just put it in a precision tip bottle because uh, when I have some very thin pieces, it's much easier to work. And it looks like that's pretty heavy, but it's really not. It's a pretty thin line. Now let's go ahead and put that right on there. 
I mean, it was heavy enough for it to eke out a little bit. But that'll dry clear. And get the other one. Come on, there we go. That's pretty thin. And let's center that on there. Right. And now I'm going to just trim it to size. There we go. Put my cap back on so that the nozzle doesn't get clogged. And I got these on Amazon. And I think I'll be ordering some more in the future and um, giving some away, I think. So now you can choose to put that up here or what you can do is have two lines separated and um, not, not centered with each other, just offset. I think I'm gonna do this right here, just for something different. And you can place it wherever you would like to on yours. Let's go right there. Kind of balances the ribbon out, I think. The other one, I like the other one as well. but I didn't have as much room up here as I did on my other card. So there we go. Now we just need something on the inside. going to bring in a piece of basic white and this is a, looks kind of like it doesn't have to be birthday but certainly it's some cause for celebration so we'll get something that goes in here with celebrate all right if we look at our stamp set um, we have the little raccoon, um, but I think um, what I'm going to do, because not all of you will have the stamp set, I think what I'm going to do is take a piece of the Zany Zoo paper, and we're going to find another little critter that will work on the inside here. We have lots to choose from, so there's some on that panel, and let's see. We could bring in our musical, our musical friends too. What I want to do is tie in something that's got, um, that's got the pool party. Now this bear looks like he's unusable, except for what we could do, because we have not. Oh, I did, I did layer this down already. That was dumb. Um, I can just cut around him and and put him down there in the corner. Let's go ahead and do that. So if I just do a, a little quick trim, I'm not going to cut a lot off. And again, we're mounting it on white, so the cutting doesn't have to be as particular as if you had uh, or we're mounting it on another piece that has more contrast. Or even any contrast. So if I just cut around him. I'm getting really tight over here. Yeek. And then we just put him right down here. Or right here. Yep, there we go. That's a perfect spot for him. Go ahead, so you get creative with some of these partial pieces here. It's a nice straight edge on the bottom. Matches right up, and there you go. Something great to celebrate, you, and there he's celebrating with this accordion. And we can go ahead and stamp happy birthday to you 
on the inside as well. Let's just get a stamp out, a block out. And let's go ahead and I'm going to stamp in the black. Just because I think it pops better. And you know, he's playing an accordion. So if you have this stamp set, you can go ahead and maybe get out your pool party uh, ink and we'll stamp some music notes because the music notes come in the stamp set. Use those when stamping a card last, last week. Maybe we'll just do this. Just a couple there. Oh, you know what? Maybe what we'll have them do is waft up from the bear. And there we go. A pretty quick and simple card. For this next card, I'm going to be bringing in the cloud dies from my Playing in the Rain set. Now, there is another die that would work for this method, actually any, any set that has cloud dies. But if you look on page, see if I can find them, page 162, the basic borders dies, which I think may be a future purchase of mine just because of some of these um, just uh, general shapes, but this one right here is kind of got a, a cloud edge, if you will. So that one would work really wonderfully as well. This is a little bit more work, but um, I'm going to make it work. So I'm going to bring in a piece. Uh, actually, I have four pieces because I know I'm going to have to cut out several of these to send to you but I'm going to be using the cloud die, and I think I can probably cut through, I don't know if I can cut through all four layers. Let's try it. Let's try it. Bring in our stamp and cut and emboss machine. Now this idea um, for this card came from a member of the artisan design team. Stampin' Up um, has demonstrators around the world on their artisan design team. They're different from the Stampin' Up! designers who, you know, create everything uh, that you see, the stamps and the, the designer series paper. The artisan design team take the Stampin' Up! artists designs and stamps and they show people what you can do with them. Um, some of the projects are truly amazing. Incredible artists on that artisan design team. Let's see if I cut through all of them. Looks like I did. All right, I'm going to set this aside because that's all I need. The rest of this card is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to take another piece of, of uh, regular copy paper and I'm gonna take some of these clouds. Oh, they're all stuck together. So I really only want a single layer. This should be thin. I could have used adhesive sheets, uh, not adhesive sheets, masking sheets here. But I wanted to, um, Wanted to keep it pretty simple. And this is something I'm gonna be able to use over and over again, I think. So there's four of each. I don't need four of each, I don't think. Uh, I'm gonna make more than what I think I need. So I'm gonna take this copy sheet. Now my card is only going to be four and a quarter inches wide, but I want to have some um, variety here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take 
this cloud and I'm going to put a little glue on the top and adhere that right there. I had some glue eek out and I don't really want that. And then I'm gonna take maybe a different cloud. You could take the same cloud, doesn't matter. And these clouds have different edges to them all the way around and lay that one down. And let's do another one. And I try to vary the heights a little bit. We'll come back in here. Let's use, mm, I like the big puppy one, so. Let's stick this up a little higher. And I can angle them, so they don't have to be, um, They don't have to be straight, um, but you do want a little bit of a variety in height. So maybe I'll put this one down a little bit. I'm gonna use another big one. I'm gonna put this one's higher. All right, that is more than enough, I think. That's probably five and a half inches anyway. All right, I'll save this for putting in some of your class kits. For those of you who place an order of $35 or more, you'll get the class kits, which will include this cloud option. I'm gonna bring in a blending brush and I'm gonna bring in Balmy Blue Ink. And this card is gonna have a very simple base. We're going to start with a base of basic white, thick basic white. I've already got one cut and scored here, but that's not what we're going to be working on. Now we could, we could just have a very simple layer card, but if you want to step it up a little bit, you want to take a sheet of regular basic white cardstock, cut it just a little bit smaller, so four, and a, uh, four inches by five and a quarter, that will just layer right on top. So when you have a layer on a layer that's the same color, basically, it just gives it a little bit more of a finished look. All right, I'm gonna bring in another piece of typing paper and um, it's gonna make it a little bit more difficult to see. My grid paper is, um, I need to order some more grid paper. I'm gonna take this and these are my clouds. What I'm going to do, and you could use a little gray in here too. Gray would be nice. I'm going to take off that first little bit, and I'm going to start off, um, well, on, to, on this, but off my cardstock. And I'm just going to rub along the edge a little bit. And see, when I move it, you get a little bit of that going on. And then I'm going to do this. And so see, we have some more clouds going. And the more you do, the more this is gonna look really cool. Oh, I should have, should have had a little bit less pressure on that first one, I think. All right. Try some more here. And you just are going right along the edge of the clouds. Some will be darker and some will be lighter and that's okay. It's kind of the way it is with clouds, right? So have you seen the movie Up? It's kind of an old movie now, it's a Disney movie. Very sweet movie. But that's the kind of vibe we're going for here today. I'm just about to the end. All right, I'm gonna leave this down here alone. I'm gonna stamp a greeting down there. So see how we have a bunch of clouds now? And even though I thought it was a little too heavy handed up there, 
it really, really does work. This is a, just a, a pretty cloudy day. All right, so now we're gonna take our stamp set. Now, if you're getting the class kit instead of a stamped image, which I am not allowed to send you in the mail, per Stampin' Up! rules, I will be sending you this little guy right here. But you get where I'm going here with the movie up? Yeah, so this little guy, we can stamp him. Take that stamp out of here. And let's find a block that fits him right there. I'll take a piece, scrap piece of basic white cardstock. Mm, let's see, this one works, I think. I'm gonna be die cutting this guy out. So I really just need a, something he fits on. Oh, that didn't stamp very well, hold on. I wonder if this ink pad needs refreshing. Yeah, that's better. It's crooked. Good thing we're die cutting him. And on the paper, he's got some lighter colors going on, but I'm gonna make this guy got, have some balloons that are really bright and cheery. So I'm gonna bring in my berry burst, and that's the light one, but it doesn't matter. You can bring in whatever you want. I'm gonna bring in, let's see, let's go with some lemon lime twist, although I think I'll use the dark lemon lime twist. We should probably have a yellow. Let's go ahead and bring in that one. And how about sweet sorbet? I haven't used that in a while. Oh, that sweet sorbet won't go well with the berry, I don't think. Uh, let's just stick with three. We can just do three. So I'm gonna go ahead and we're just gonna color some balloons. I love Berry Burst. In fact, I'm gonna make two of my balloons Berry Burst. And I'm gonna go a second time around the edge, just a little bit darker. Okay. And let's put in our lemon lime. Where are we going with that one? Right here, maybe. So a lemon lime twist. Look how bright and cheery those are. And let's go ahead with our daffodil delight. Now we need to color our little raccoon, so I'm gonna bring in some crumb cake and some pebbled path. All right, so my crumb cake, oh, pebbled path is for a skunk, isn't it? Well, you know, no, he can be for the darker parts of my, of my raccoon. I'm gonna just take I think this is the light crumb cake. Yep, so this one's the light crumb cake. You can use the dark if you want to, to shade a little bit more. I'm gonna keep this relatively simple because you don't need to watch me color the whole thing. I wonder what color a raccoon's belly is. I have a feeling it's lighter than the rest of him but I'm not sure if it's gonna be today. I think it might be darker. Just add a little bit more shading in, in some spots. Oh, I almost forgot the top of his head. There we go. 
we got to do his tail because some of his tail is going to be darker. That's where you see those little hash marks. I'm going to bring in my pebbled path dark, I think. I'm just going to go ahead and put that over those. Those stripes will pop through as this dries a little bit. And I'm going to put his mask in dark. Now I could give him some colored eyes if I wanted to. But that would be the whites of his eyes wouldn't be so white, so it might look a little weird. Give him a little colored nose. I think I'm going to keep his belly white. I think so. I mean, I could pull in ivory, which is another color. Uh, let's try it. The ivory's kind of darker, actually. Let's see what kind of color it turns out to be when it dries. But you know, if I don't like the color uh, combination quite so much, I can come back in with my crumb cake, my light crumb cake, and then it kind of matches the tone a little bit more. Yeah, that looks really, really good, I think. So now let's go ahead. I'm going to put my blends away, and we're going to die cut this guy. All right, I have my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I'm going to have plate one, two, one of the threes. One's getting a little bent. We're gonna have to do a little work on that guy. This one too. So these get bent. I had an event not too long ago and everybody tends to work in the middle. And that for sure is what's gonna warp your plates sooner rather than later. So it's always best to work around the edges and the ends, not just the center. And that will keep your plates in the best form possible. I'm gonna go ahead and get my Zany Zoo dies out. Now these dies also work with the designer series paper. I'm not sure if I will have the class kit already die cut for you, have the, you know the image from the DSP die cut for you, or if I'm going to make you fussy cut them if you don't have the die set. I don't know yet. All right, there we go. And now we need a plate number three on top. And we'll run that through. Easy peasy. And when you're taking this off, if you've used a post-it note, or if in this case I've used washi tape, you're gonna just be very careful to remove it. Just go nice and slow so that you don't rip the paper. There we go, and there is our little raccoon. And let's bring in our card front. So here's our base, and here's the, the clouds that we got. Now look, he's floating in the clouds. How cute is that? Pretty cute, right? I wish I'd had this idea. But there's a reason why I'm not the artisan design team. 
I can find great projects all day long. It takes me a long time to design my own. I do, but it does take me a lot longer. So let's see. We put him like that. Yeah. Now we're gonna just put a little greeting down here. Now the greetings that come in the stamp set, I don't think are really, uh, they're kind of little. I mean, I can do happy birthday to you or something great to celebrate. But see how the font is fairly little. It's not, not too bad on the happy birthday to you, but I think I want something a little more substantial. Let's see what I have in my stamp arsenal. Here's a stamp set that I got not too long ago and it's got bigger, bolder sentiments. So I could do, um, so happy to celebrate you. I think I'll do that. I mean, I could do just a, a cute little hello, I think as well, but let's go ahead. See, it's not even used yet. Look at how crisp and clean those, those stamp sets are. Uh, those stamps are so happy to celebrate you. Let's go ahead and get that one out. And let's see if I put that right here or do I want to put it right up here? Oh, I already attached this guy down here. Hmm. So that might be a little bit too big. And you know what? I pulled out my stamp set to get to the dies, but I think, I think I'm gonna go with this Oh Happy Day that is in with the playing in the rain bundle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put, well, not this back. So that's where I got the clouds, you remember? I'm gonna go ahead and take the Oh Happy Day. That goes for a lot of different things. And this is one of the reasons why I like getting Paper Pumpkin and some of the other kits because it just, they add to my sentiments all the time. And I'm gonna go ahead with a nice bold black, I think. I think this is the black that might need re-inking. But we're gonna hope for the best. I don't know, I think I still like it up here. But what am I gonna do down here? I can add some more clouds, can't I? I'm gonna do that. Oh, happy day. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring my clouds back in and finish, finish this up. Let's see, how do I wanna put this? Right like this, I think. And we need my blending brush. some more clouds in there and I think a little bit more down here just to finish it off that's still the same one there we go oh happy day I'm just gonna mount this right on here and to make it really look even more finished, we'll mount it with dimensionals. I'm gonna use up some edges. Let's go ahead, some right here.
and I'm looking at my basic white sheet and I can see a little bit of the back edge. So I'm just gonna flip it over. That way it's just the front edge showing. And there we go, oh, happy day. We can go ahead and put on some gems if you wanna make this a little bit more exciting, but I think I like the nice clean look right here. Just keep it pretty simple. If you are enjoying the projects tonight and would like to create them on your own, simply place an order of $35 or more in my online store and I will ship that class project kit directly to you. In addition, if your order is $50 or more, I am going to give you a four inch by six inch, inch sheet of each of the papers found in this soft shimmer 12 by 12 um, cardstock pack. Now, the colors in here are Berry Burst, Bubble Bath, Lost Lagoon, Night of Navy, and Pretty Peacock. And this stuff really does shimmer. It's not picking it up on camera, but it really does shimmer, and you'll find that a four by six inch piece goes a long way. To place your order, simply look below in the description of this video. You may have to click on the word more to see the full description and you will find a link that contains a host code associated with this class. That link will take you to my online stores and I will send you that class kit out next Tuesday. For this next card, I'm going to be working with the um, traveling themed DSP sheet. And I'm also gonna be using um, one of the things that I pointed out in the very first card that we made uh, tonight, and that is using edge pieces. So I'm gonna make a strip that features these three guys, and I cut out that repeated down here. So I cut that out. So I cut around the little bunny ears, and then I went ahead and I fussy cut these guys. Now I did a rough kind of fussy cut around here and I wasn't too careful. So you can see that this was the edge. This was the edge of the sheet over here. And I left a little bit of the dirt on there. I'm bringing in a piece of basic gray cardstock and I pulled in one of the colors that is in um, most of these, well, I guess this is the, this is a pink in here, but it's got a bit, bit of an orange tint in the center of these flowers, but I'm pulling in the orange from the fox because I think that will pop on this gray. I love gray and orange together. And I'm gonna put a piece of basic white in there as well. And what we're gonna do is just adhere these guys in here. Now, the bunny and the gator, or crocodile, I don't know which it is, um, they're going in the same direction. And I'm gonna put this little fox, he's going the other way, so I'm gonna put him on the other side of the street. Now, I could have used a gray for the street. However, um, that would have required more fussy cutting in and out of the details, and I didn't really wanna do that. Um, and do I need to? Probably not, but look, it looks kind of weird just having it, you know, mostly white on the gray. So this is what I chose to do instead. Now this basic gray that's back here is pretty flat. So I'm going to add some more detail with um with this stamp set right here i think so i've got confetti and i've got music notes well they're not playing music they're just having fun um, but i don't know that it's really a confetti kind of thing either so what are we going to do to kind of spice up the background of this well one of the things that we can do is we can take a basic gray pad and open it up and just make some streaks and almost even just kind of 
tap the pad. And you can see this just puts on some marks on your cardstock. All right. It grunges it up a little bit. This basic gray pad is very, very juicy. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a second. And in the meantime, I'm going to mount some of these pieces. So see, you don't even, you don't always need a stamp to get a background to look a little more interesting. Sometimes all you just need is a stamp pad. Oh, here we go. Put this on here. And this white piece is two and a quarter inches wide, and the orange is two and a half. Looks like this sticks over just a little bit, but that's all right. And we'll have to adhere this little alligator crocodile thingy right to the end because he's got a straight cut over here. So he's just coming into the picture here. And because I'm white on white, then it kind of all blends in. Now I can add a little bit of color here and I'm gonna show you that in a minute. And then I'm gonna put that guy on last. I wanna put my bunny on the other end and then that will kind of dictate where I put my fox. So here's my bunny. And then, now my fox, he's sticking out over the edge. So I wanna make sure that I'm not putting glue on his head. Cause that's at a different level. So here he is over here. I really like this background on the card. I think that's pretty interesting. And then we can put that, adhere that right down there. Now this has a pretty big open space and that would be a perfect place to write something. Now, I think that the sentiments that are in Zany Zoo don't really go well there. I think I want something that's looking more like a, you know, a hello or, you know, something like that. So let's, again, go back to the stamp arsenal and see what we can get from other stamp sets. All right, I have my charming sentiments and I happen to see a hay there. I think that's a great little neutral sentiment there. Um, I use this stamp set quite a bit. It's got lots of great sentiments in it. So I'm going to put hay there right here. And I think I will do it in pumpkin pie. To kind of tie everything in together. Now the qu next question is, do I want to center that? Probably so. Hey there. And then I think we're ready to adhere the whole piece together. And I like to put it a little bit higher than halfway. So I don't want I want this to be smaller than this. It just looks better to me that way, I think. Not quite as much, but there's something that looks like that. All right, and now what I can do is I can put on some gems. And so let's see what we have for gems to put on. I've got all sorts of different kinds here. I've got these that have some, you know, multicolors in that. That's a possibility. 
None of these seem to go. I do have these gold sequins. We'll consider that. I've got some, hmm, some of these classic matte dots. So same as this one. It's just um, out of the package. So let me, I mean, I could put some butterflies on too, butterflies flying around the road, but the card looks a little more grungy to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the classic matte dots that I have left here. Looks like the gray ones got used in the event that I did with, a, with my team not too long ago. So let's see, let's go ahead. Ooh, got a little bit too much putty coming out of there. All right, so we can put some right here. Maybe push it over a little bit. Oops, I just took it off its adhesive. So there is a good spot for it, I guess. I don't want to put it closer here because then it'll look like the bunny's pooping. That's not good. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing this and it's kind of later than it should be when I'm doing this. Not as late as it's been, as it's been sometimes. Sometimes I work pretty late. But... Hmm. I'm not, not a big fan of all these placements. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that one right there. I'm gonna move this one over slightly. All right. I, Got him off his glue dot too. So I'm gonna use my pick tool. Move that over here. And I'm gonna take this one off altogether. Put him back on where he belongs. And so I just got a little hay there. Now for the inside, we'll need a piece of basic white. And maybe we need, need another another critter that's writing something. I'm not going to use this guy because he's a little bit more, he's a little too brown, I think. So, because I've got a gray inside. Um, let's see. We can use this bunny over here. Tie in the bunny from the front. Again, we're just gonna quickly fussy cut him. I saved you a bunch of time in the beginning of this video because I know you've seen me fussy cutting. You don't need to see me do it all again. But since this one I'm doing on the fly, I thought yeah, you can probably handle seeing a little bit of it. And remember, because we're putting it on white, it doesn't have to be too fussy. I'm gonna put this right down. I'm gonna put him right here in the bottom right. Press that down. And this is a Hey There card, so that means that um, I'm just checking in with somebody. I don't have a, another real sentiment to say. We're just going to put him in here. And then I have plenty of space to write. Hey there. Now I said I was gonna go in and, and show you what you could do here. I'm gonna take a light smoky slate and we're gonna dust up some of this. Just add a little bit of color. And I don't have to be um, tied to the black marks that are on there, I can just put it a whole bunch on the ground. 
and yet not fill it entirely. I could color the bike if I wanted to. For instance, I could color this little piece in here, in that part of the wheel. I could do the same thing here. I could color some of the tires. I could color his scarf if I wanted to tie in some gray a little bit more. The bunny, he's going to stay white. But let's go ahead. I think I will keep the scarf white just because it has nice contrast to that gray. But you can go ahead and color some of these, even if they're not colored much on here. Um, this is probably not the best example, but like on this one where this little hedgehog, which by the way, who doesn't think of Bob Ross when you see that little hedgehog painting? Um, you could color him brown pretty easily um, if you wanted to add a little bit more color here. So. There we go, that's card number three. Okay, this next card is going to be a little bit different. And we're going to be using this die from the Scalloped Contours die, the die that I happened to spend probably an hour cleaning up my room so I could find it only to see that it was attached to the back of this package. Like this package stands up like this on um, a little shelf. Uh, it's actually my uh, file cabinet. And I couldn't see it because it was like this. And when I picked it up, I didn't, I, you know, it, it picks up hard from my metal file cabinet. And that made me think, oh wait, maybe it's stuck. This is the bag I keep my magnets in, and that's why I couldn't find it. So will be happy to know I found it. So I'm going to take a piece of basic black cardstock, and this is simply a five and a half by four and a quarter piece. I've got a couple pieces of designer series paper that are going to go onto these ends, and these are one inch strips. They're one inch by four inches. And so that leaves a, an eighth of an inch border at the top and bottom. And I'm going to leave an eighth of an inch on this side and of this side of it. And then another one here and another one here. So if I have four eighths, let me help you do the math. That's one half of an inch plus one inch plus one inch. That's two and a half inches. So the piece that I want to go in the middle here is going to be five and a half minus two and a half three and a half inches wide. I'm gonna cut another piece of basic gray that is, what did I say? I said three and a half, but I meant three because five and a half minus two and a half is three. And I'm going to score that in half because this was the eight and a half inch length. I'm gonna score that in half at four and a quarter. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have a card on a card. And this is going to be an easel card, though. So with an easel card, you need a bend in this middle. So I'm going to bring my paper trimmer back in. And remember, this was at the four and a quarter mark. So halfway, half of four and a quarter is two and one eighth, which is two marks past the two inch mark and so I have another one here and these these folds get the same they go in the same direction so what I'm gonna have here is something that looks like this now I have to do something to these little pieces to tie it all together so the the designer series paper piece that I'm using is this little elephant. This I haven't used the elephant yet, I don't think. And he's got all sorts of colors in that banner. So you could choose any colors you want. I think the gray, and I chose that because elephants are generally gray. I chose a piece of lemon lolly that I have because that goes with that color right there. And I think yellow and gray are stunning together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a um, small blending brush and 
I need to get a piece of scrap paper here. And instead of black and white over here, I'm gonna make this black and lemon lolly. I'm gonna bring in my lemon lolly here, ink it up, and just go ahead and add some lemon lolly to this designer series paper. So black and white is nice, but you can also color this. And the black absorbs the color, so you're really only, it only looks like you're coloring the white in there. You can go as dark with it as you want. I'm trying to get it somewhat uniform. There we go. Got our lemon lolly pieces. Lemon lolly, I can't even say it. I'm gonna bring in my adhesive. So I'm gonna use the glue. You can use stamp and seal if you want. Now I know some of you use other adhesives. I love I love the Tombow from Stampin' Up. I also like the seal. I know a lot of you seem to struggle with it um, because you're used to the old snail. Um, but really, once you learn that it's not the old snail and you use it the way it should be used, it really is, is quite a nice product. Let's go ahead and just put that one there. I've just got some little side stripes here going on. And this is going to go right there. I'm not going to touch the bended side. That's the easel. That's the front. I'm going to just apply this glue to the back. And the liquid glue is a very strong adhesive once it's down there. And so that just lines up top and bottom. All right. Let that set up right there. Now with my lemon lolly piece, I'm going to be putting my little elephant on here, but I want to give him a little bit of, um, I think I, I just need to give him a little character. So I'm going to go ahead and die cut from this lemon lolly piece. Let's go ahead and, you know what, how would this have been? This, just look, you could have used lemon lolly as the base too. That would have been nice. That would have been kind of fun. Hmm. I don't know. I might even like that one. But let's see what it looks like after I die cut this. Bring my machine. One, two, and a three. Sound like Lawrence Welk. For those of you who remember Lawrence Welk, which is probably most of my customers and friends. Somebody told me I was getting up there in age today. A 70 year old told me that. Oh boy, just what I needed to hear. Whatever. Whatever, Steve. So this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna put my little, my little elephant right there. And let's go ahead and adhere him to my lemon lolly piece. There he goes. All right, now when you're making an easel card, with an easel card, you make it so that it stands up like this. I, I don't know if maybe that way I can show you. So you can't attach this whole piece. You can only attach the bottom half of it. So what I like to do is kind of put it in line 
and then I can see where the fold line is. It's right here, right, right here. So I'm gonna make sure that my glue is only below my finger. And I'll center this on here. And you can see that I didn't get any glue up in there. Oh, there we go. So I've done easel cards before, but this is the first one that's only like a little itty bitty easel on something that has some decorations on the side. And so now we need to put in here a little piece that stops that. And so if we go ahead and get our stamp set out, we've got something great to celebrate you. That's perfect size to go along here. Okay, we're gonna put that along there. But we do need a place to write. So we're gonna bring in, and Lemon Lolly, um, I can do a Lemon Lolly base here, or I can use basic white, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut something that's two and three quarters inches. So a little bit narrower so that I make sure that it doesn't show out the sides. Two and three quarters by four. So that's gonna go right in there, centered in that little card base. It should line up with the tops and bottoms of those black pieces too. All right, now again, we still don't have our little stopper. I'm gonna take a little piece of this lemon lolly. And let's see, um, we're gonna go ahead and stamp on here, but I think if I make this three quarters of an inch wide, that'll be good for this sentiment. You know, I probably should stamp my sentiment first, given that it is a cling stamp and not a photopolymer stamp. But we're gonna live on the edge here. Paper has two sides, so I get two chances. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, if you recall what to do with an easel card, you wanna make sure that this sticks up from the base. So we're gonna put dimensionals on it. All right. And I'm gonna put that right it's almost centered, hold on. <laughs> it's sticking. There we go. And so now it stands up by itself. See that? And then you can write in here, and it, this can be on display and nobody will necessarily see what you wrote. Now you wanna decorate that a little bit? We certainly can. Let's go ahead and see what we've got for some gems. Now we have some Lemon Lolly gems, in this adhesive backed solid gems pack. Let's see, do I want to put Lemon Lolly on Lemon Lolly though? What are my other options? So none of these colors go. Um, I don't really think that goes either. Could put some butterflies, but that seems odd. Um, I think some of the, these pink gems might be nice if you don't mind the pink with the yellow, but maybe maybe we do the gold sequins. And this is from our pastel adhesive back sequin set. And let's see, get my take your pick tool. I can find everything now because I cleaned up. Well, honestly, 
that sometimes means I can't find anything because I don't know when it's organized I forget where I put things if I put them away so we've got two there let's go ahead and maybe put another one right up there yeah so there's just some gems to kind of liven it up a little bit the pink really would have looked kind of cute there too because there is a little pink in there so that would have worked it's all good we've made our choice you could also put them out on the sides too for a little interest but there we go there's our little our little easel card okay so i had this card put away and then i thought oh i think this is really cute i could make this for my show-off swap one of my show-off swaps in las vegas so i'm going to las vegas in august um, to a stampin up leadership conference and um, I've joined a couple of swaps and they're the smaller size because we have to, we're expected to do more. So we have to use embellishments and layers and, and you know, fun folds are good and ribbon, stuff like that. So I thought, oh, if I added this ribbon, now this is a lemon lolly ribbon. And if I just tucked this back here and tied a bow, I thought that might look kind of cute. So I tried it. And I tried it again because I couldn't tie the bow. That really happened last time too. Come on, cooperate. Let's try it again. Start with a bigger loop. There we go. And then we had this, and if I pull the ends and I just adjust them just so, and I trim the end, trim this one so it looks nice. Then I had this cute little, I think I need to trim this a little bit more. I had this cute little bow. And I thought that would make a cute little baby card too, wouldn't it? But it's gonna be a birthday card. Maybe it's a birthday card for a very young child. Um, I mean, it could be a birthday card for anybody, but isn't that, I think the addition of the ribbon makes that kind of cute. It makes it cute closed and it makes it cute when it's open. So when it's open, you don't really see it as much. But this way you get the nice presentation both ways. So just thought I'd share that with you. I'm so glad you have joined me for my Zoo Crew series. If you've missed any episodes, you can go back and watch. There should be a link to the last one at the very end of this video. I think a little screen will pop up and you can click on that in order to view one of the previous videos. Now, as much fun as I've had with the Zoo Crew, and I've got even more ideas for it, we need to move on. The next Tune In Tuesday, July 25th, will be Christmas, because it's Christmas in July in Mrs. Rogers' Stamperhood. So I hope you will join me that whole week, but especially Tune In Tuesday. I will see you then.